Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone to our uh, class on character building through the Quran for our children. Uh, today's topic will be again a continuation of our most important discussion on the purpose of life. We talked about serving Allah, we talked about serving the society. Serving Allah, knowing, loving, and worshipping. And we understand what worship is and the five elements of worship. And then yesterday we talked about serving the society as part of our purpose in life. Today we'll talk about another form of service which would be uh, the last part of our discussion on our purpose of life. But I'd like to introduce this topic with a short and brief story or incident that happened during the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Muslim reported that it was in the morning when the Prophet Sallallahu was sitting with some of his companions and all of a sudden the Prophet Sallallahu noticed some people who were like strange to everybody. They looked very poor. They had sleeveless blankets that they, 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 that they had and they looked really poor and needy. So when the Prophet ﷺ noticed that, his face, the hadith says, تَغَيَّرَ وَجْهُ His face looked different. And then he ﷺ stood up and got into the masjid and got out. It's like he was thinking about what to do in this situation. Could he tolerate seeing some needy people in front of him and he could help? So he, it, he was very worried and his face changed. And this is very important that we'll discuss later. So he asked Bilal to call the Adhan and gather everybody and, 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 and he prayed and he gave a speech reminding people that we are from Nafsun Wahida, we are all coming from the same family, we all belong to Adam and Eve. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let's donate some of what we have, some of our money, some of our dates, some of the clothes we have, any food we have. And then one person from the Ansar got a huge bag full of food and clothes. And then he put it in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And then everyone after they saw this man from the Ansar, everyone followed that, uh, that, uh, that way and brought clothes and brought uh, food. Till the Prophet ﷺ saw two big piles of food and, and clothes. And at this point the hadith says that the Prophet's face uh, became like illuminating, became like uh, glittering gold, like the bright moon, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith says. So he felt very happy for serving those people and meeting their needs. And this is what I want to add today for purpose number three. If we talked about serving Allah and serving the society, today uh, the purpose number three is serving serving others serving others is this a purpose of our life yes it is one important purpose in our life uh, this is something you should invest your life and your money in to serve others and this would make you feel that your life is more meaningful we see three things the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did uh, you know i uh, in, in, in psychology, when they talk about empathy, they talk about three levels of empathy, okay? They talk about three levels of empathy. I want you to focus on these three levels, and you will be surprised that these three types or levels of empathy are in the hadith we just quoted, are in that incident I started with. They say empathy, the first type of empathy is Cognitive empathy, and this is when you understand the situation of the people in need or the situation of the one facing the problem. So it's about understanding, and we see that in the Prophet ﷺ example. He noticed those needy families. He noticed those needy people. And then they said, the next level of empathy is called emotional empathy, and this is when you feel for them. And we also see that in the hadith. 
The hadith says, تَغَيَّرَ وَجْهُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم His face looked different صلى الله عليه وسلم And that is the emotional empathy he felt for them He put himself in their situation And then the, the highest level of empathy is, is called compassionate empathy And in compassionate empathy, here you move to help And this is also what we see the Prophet ﷺ doing. He gathered the Sahaba, he campaigned for those people, and he, he, he made sure that they would have clothes and enough food for their, uh, for their survival. That is why, yes, it is part of our purpose in life to serve others. Muslims do not lead a self-centered life. That idea doesn't exist in the Muslim mind those practicing Muslim who understand who Allah is and by the way the more you know about Allah and the more you love Allah and the more connected you are with Allah the more you will be connected with people and be ready to help them why because when you connect with Allah you will receive some of these attributes of beauty you will receive parts of the mercy of Allah and that mercy has to be exemplified for others has to be shown to others so do not tell me I only pray if your prayer really works then it will fill your heart with inner peace and compassion and mercy and if your heart is full of compassion and mercy it will be easily shown to others so in the Quran you find that relationship uh, completely uh, emphasized in the Quran like so pray, establish your prayers, and give your zakah, give out your charity. Why are these two? Because we're interested in serving Allah, worshiping Allah, and serving others, helping them. So what, it, and this leads me uh, to the ayah I want to discuss today. What is the ayah we want to discuss? Uh, the ayah, it, it's actually part of an ayah, but again, the point is to memorize these ayah, so that they can shape your behavior and shape the way you think because these are great values the first uh, or the ayah we'll deal with is called is goes like this wafalu wafalu al-khayra la'allakum tuflihun Again, وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So it means, and do good so that you will succeed. And do good so that you will succeed. So your good deeds leads to success in this life and in the afterlife. So let me write down the translation because this is our memory ayah. It says, and do good so that you will succeed وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Again, let me emphasize this point till you're done with writing it down وَفْعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ I talked about the connection between serving Allah and serving others what is the connection? These the, Serving others, I would say, is an extension to serving Allah. Why? Because how would serving others be an act of worship? Because this is a purpose in life. How could it be an act of worship? Because when you serve others with the intention of honoring Allah's, Allah and, and serving others as Allah's creatures, you will be actually worshipping Allah because you're doing this in honor of Allah and you're doing this because they are related to Allah that you love the people that Allah created are related to Allah in the, in the form of creator and created let me give you an example imagine you are in the presence of a king and he had his children around him and one of his children got really sick and you were able to heal that sick child. How would the king do with you? 
of course the king will be very proud of you, will elevate you you in, in, in life and, and reward you because you helped one of his children. Every analogy breaks, al-a'la. Allah created everybody in this life. So when we help one of one needy person, we're helping someone that Allah created. So we notice the relationship between the person we're, we're helping and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the relationship? We're helping one of the servants of Allah. We're helping one of the creatures of Allah. Even if it is, even if it is an animal, it's one of Allah's creatures. That's why we have to be nice and kind to animals. And you know the hadith about the lady that was very thirsty in the desert and she, she found a well and she drank some water and then as she was walking she, she saw a, do, a thirsty dog almost eating sand out of, uh, out of uh, thirst. So she felt really sorry for this dog and she said this dog must be suffering from the thirst I was, like the thirst I was suffering from. And she, uh, she took off her shoes and filled it with water and gave it to the dog. And the, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهَا Allah recognized her good deed and, and would admit her to Jannah in the Day of Judgment because of that act of kindness. Why we're doing this? Because this is one of the creatures of Allah. So serving others in that, with that intention is like honoring Allah. Because that is why the Prophet ﷺ, when he, when he talked to husbands and, 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 and when he told them, do not hit your wives, he did not say, do not hit your wives. He said, لا تضربوا إماء الله, which means, do not hit the female servants of Allah. And, and it's like, because when you violate this, it's not violating just your wife's rights. It's also violating Allah's rights because she is the, the servant of Allah. And you're hitting one of the servants of Allah. So if we live in this way, we look at people in a completely different way. So I hope you this concept is, is, is clear to you. So again, let's go back to the ayah. وَفَعَلُوا الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And do good so that you will succeed. Next time when you're helping somebody, do it with the intention that Allah is in your mind. You're aware that you're helping one of the servants of Allah. And you're doing this with the intention that when someone receives your help, they would say, Alhamdulillah. So you make them thank Allah. All of these are great intentions that would make your life uh, more meaningful. Let's erase this and, and, and talk more about this idea of khayr and doing good and, and how it is presented in Islam. Um, we said that doing good is something, uh, helping others goes hand in hand with, uh, with praying and we recognize the, uh, the, uh, the connection. Now, Sometimes the Qur'an makes helping others mandatory and that is in the form of zakat. So let me introduce that concept for you. What is zakat? Zakat is, is something, mend, is a charity that is mandatory to be given. If you have a specific amount of money around let's say $5,000 it never decreased for one complete year, so you need to pay 2.5% of that money. 2.5% of that money. Yeah, 2.5% is not that big. You know how, what is 2.5%? It's like if you, if this is your money, okay? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you can divide your money into ten parts, ten equal parts, the Quran is saying, okay, keep, keep all of these for you. Keep these nine parts for yourself. Okay? Now, for this last part, 
divide it into four equal parts. Okay? Keep three for yourself and just give out that part. That is the 2.5%. That's why it is mandatory. Islam makes sure that you're, you're financially stable, so you have at least 5,000, around 5,000, and it never decreased. So you look at your money at the end of the year, and you give your money, not just your income, all the money you have, and you give 2.5% of that money. Because it doesn't make any sense to be, uh, to be financially stable, and your neighbor is suffering. So you must. This is not recommended. This is mandatory. This is people's right. Of course, in Islam, there is something called sadaqah. And sadaqah is more about something voluntary to give. Uh, so any amount, any time. And of course, the 2.5% is the minimum. So you can give more. So what I am trying to say here is, in Islam, not only Islam encourages us to do good, but there are some moments when Islam would say it is mandatory to help. And your help is not a favor. It is mandatory and it is people's rights. That 2.5% is not your money. If you keep it, it's, it's like you're stealing it. It's someone else. That's why if we, found, if we find a poor person, that means there is a rich man who did not pay his zakah. If we found thousands of poor people, that means there are thousands of rich people who did not pay their zakah. So this is just an example of uh, how great Islam is in organizing our life and in taking care of the needy, uh, the needs of, of the poor people. There is also something called mandatory sadaqah, by the way, and this is also something we give in the month of Ramadan to every family, to every family. Uh, basically, anyone who had the food for his day and night has to give this sadaqah, around $10 for each family member, and you give out that money so that the Muslim community and the community around us would receive their aid with no need and, and, and no need for food, no need for clothes, and they are happy at least in that uh, occasion. So that becomes mandatory. Also, in, uh, let me close with one last point that shows how Muslims were interested in the idea of serving others. There is this last concept I close with, and it is called waqf. What is waqf? The word waqf means a trust or endowment. What does that mean? It means a property or any form of property or money or income that is assigned to support a specific project. Like I would say, you know what, take these one million and use it to support orphans in this village. So this one million is waqf. Or take these hundred uh, acres and any, uh, and, 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 uh, and the income that comes from this land is supposed to be supporting uh, this hospital or this school or that masjid. This is called the waqf. And Muslims throughout history, they had great examples of this idea of waqf. Let me give you this touching uh, example of waqf. Uh, Ibn Battuta, this is a very famous Muslim traveler, Ibn Battuta. Sometimes I write names of scholars so that you can search it. So this is one famous Muslim traveler. You can search about him and you will feel, feel very proud about his writing. He traveled throughout the Muslim land and wrote uh, some incidents that wrote about incidents he faced. One of these incidents, he said, one day I was in, uh, I think in Sham or in Damascus, and then he found a group of people standing around a child um, crying. So he asked, why is this child crying? They said, because his mom sent him with this dish to buy some food, and the dish got broken and he's really sad. So he said, what are you going to do? Then someone showed up and said, that is easy. Just go to that store. They have a waqf for broken 
uh, plates. So if a child or a servant broke a plate, they can go to the waqf and, and actually exchange it for a sound and new uh, plate so that the, the child or the servant does not feel uh, rebuked and does not feel sad and so that no one would disappoint them or rebuke them. This is just an example. Anything the community needed, they would make a walk for it. There was a walk, so they had walk for, for education, for schools, walk for the mosques. And this is all by the rich people in the community. Why? Because they, they grow up with this concept of وَفْعَلُ الْخَيْرِ And this is part of their purpose in life. So they were so generous with their money because they know what money is, who they are and who Allah is, and what they are investing for. There was also an interesting type of, uh, of, uh, of, of waqf about, uh, about street dogs and stray dogs. They had a waqf for it to take care of them. There was also a waqf for lending uh, jewels for, uh, uh, for, for ladies who cannot afford to buy gold uh, during their wedding day, so they will lend them the jewels, and then after the wedding, maybe in a month, they would turn the gold back so that they don't feel uh, sad or they don't feel lonely or do not, and and they don't and they would not compare themselves to others. That was another idea. One last thing was they they had a walk for uh, to hire two people in a hospital, and their job was very strange. Their job was to just go and sit next to a sick person and talk about uh, what the doctor is saying about this man and he will recover soon. And, and we talk greatly about this doctor and say, this doctor helped one of my relatives do this. And in this way, they would lift up the spirit of that sick person and give him comfort indirectly so that this would be part of his of his recovery because when you feel good your immune system would work would work better and you have uh, greater hope and this would help in healing and this is by the way it's uh, scientifically true um, I have a book called uh, imager image therapy so when you just think about good things it will just even if it doesn't exist it will make you feel better so again, what is our third purpose in life? Serving others. So we talked about three major purposes that we all should invest our life in. The first one, serving Allah. How? La, know, love, worship. And we talked about five ways to worship. And then we talked about serving the society. Your job could be, uh, full, could be part of fulfilling your purpose in life. Uh, with the intention of serving your community and doing amara and serving others in general I hope you guys you memorize all of these ayat and they become part of your and they would shape your behavior and I thank you very much for watching all of these uh, episodes and I wish the best for you and we love all of you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh